Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well. I wanted to let you know why I have not posted any videos. For the past week. It's because I've been experiencing a very difficult time lately. I've developed a very bad bacterial infection in my left leg. This is due to the fact that I'm a diabetic. I spent a week in the hospital. And now I'm self-administering at home two different kinds of antibiotics, five times a day for the next six weeks. Prayerfully, I will be able to get back on track soon. This video message will be in two parts. Now, let's get into this lesson. Matthew 7 21 to 23, Not every one that say unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. It is very important that you understand that the word iniquity carries the idea of doing things that are against the will of God. It is sometimes used interchangeably with the word sin. Remember, 1 John 3 4, everyone who sins is breaking God's law, for all sin is contrary to the law of God. Therefore, you must realize that even though all of these people were religious, and probably considered to be good people, yet they will still loose their souls, because of iniquity. Why? Because they chose to believe the lies of men rather than obey the word of God. Therefore, you must know the word of God for yourself. I have a serious question to ask you. Are you going to be one of those people that Jesus is talking about? I sincerely hope not. Have you obeyed the gospel in order to be saved? Or did you follow man's false doctrine and prayed a so-called sinner's prayer? It is very important for you to understand that God has never authorized, commanded or even allowed anyone to pray in order to be saved. It is crucial that you understand that praying for salvation is not part of the gospel in any way. This is because, the gospel requires obedience not just acceptance. Those who teach this false doctrine, by telling you to accept Christ as your Savior, are lying to you. And I will prove it to you. The Bible proves this in John 9 31 and Isaiah 59 1-2. John 9 31, we know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but He is ready to hear those who worship Him and do His will. Isaiah 59 1-2, Listen. The Lord's arm is not too weak to save you, nor is his ear too deaf to hear you call. But the trouble is that your sins have cut you off from God. Because of sin he has turned his face away from you and will not listen anymore. Pause the video on the next two screens. Then you will see for yourself that they are lying. Because the words accept in Jesus or accept in Christ are not even in the Bible in the first place. Take note, the Bible never says accept in Jesus anywhere in the scriptures. It says zero occurrences. Take note also, that the Bible never says except in Christ either in the scriptures. It also says zero occurrences. Therefore, the words except in Jesus or except in Christ are not even found together in the same scripture in the entire Bible. Now, you just saw for yourself that everyone who teaches you to pray a sinner's prayer is a liar. Sadly, most people don't realize that their faith in Christ must be based on what the scriptures said, not on what men say about the scriptures. This is why it is so essential that you understand what God requires of you to be saved. That way you can become one of his children according to the scriptures. Therefore, take note to what Jesus said, John 7 37-38, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. When he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit, who would be given to everyone who believed and obeyed the gospel. But the Spirit had not yet been given, because Jesus had not yet entered into His glory. Remember, biblical faith only comes from the Word of God. Romans 10 17, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Therefore, Peter explained in Acts 2 38, how you must render obedience to the Gospel of Christ. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But, if you have not followed Peter's instructions to obey the gospel, then the Lord does not know you from a relationship standpoint. Sadly, this means that despite what you may feel, you do not know the Lord either. Paul also pointed out that despite having an encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus, he too had to be baptized to be saved. Romans 6 3-6, Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him. Through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, 
that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Take note of what Paul wrote to Timothy, 2 Timothy 2 19, Nevertheless the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal, the Lord knows those who are his, and let every one that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And the sinner's prayer is iniquity. Just like baptizing babies. God does not accept this at all. It is very important that you understand that those who teach you to pray to be saved are teaching you to believe and practice iniquity. This is why Paul desired the church in Ephesians to understand that sometimes the very people who who are thought very highly of may be deceiving them. Through teaching false doctrine. And anyone who teaches false doctrine don't represent the Lord. Despite their ability to captivate the hearts of many. It is very important for you to realize that there are false prophets who are pointing people to enter at the gate that leads to destruction. They do this by teaching their many false doctrines. Therefore, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what we think of ourselves, or even what others may think of us. The only thing that will matter is, have you done what God required? Your faith can't be based on your feelings, or on hearsay from what some modern day preacher or motivational speaker teaches. I hope that if you have been following my videos, God's plan of securing your soul is becoming clearer to you. Can you see that this is why Peter said, Acts 2 37-38, When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, modern-day preachers and motivational speakers are telling you lies. They are absolutely wrong when they teach you to pray a so-called sinner's prayer. Many modern-day preachers and motivational speakers are able to share with their audience very practical life principles. The kinds of principles that they have learned throughout their lives. You must understand that life principles are based upon the life experiences that you have lived and have experienced either directly or indirectly through the lives of others. It is very important you understand that life principles are not the same as biblical principles. Biblical principles are not based upon your personal experience and the life that you have lived. Biblical principles are only based upon the Word of God. In other words, the only thing that matters when it comes to biblical principles is what has God said about the matter. What I may think or feel does not matter. The life that you have lived and the choices that you have made must line up with the Word and will of God. Therefore, you must make sure that you can read what you believe in the Scriptures as well as share your biblical faith with anyone who asks you about your faith in the Lord. 1 Peter 3:15. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. I pray that you are gaining a better understanding of the importance of your faith being based only on the Word of God. Because the following well-known preachers are not teaching biblical principles concerning your soul's salvation. Preachers like T.D. Jakes, Charles Stanley, Stephen Furtick, Alan Parr, and Joel Osteen. Just to name a few prominent preachers and motivational speakers. May teach good and practical life principles. But they also lie. And teach prayer as the means of salvation. But now you know it's a lie. And you will see that even further in part 2, why that is the case. Please stop listening to anyone that is not proving what they are saying by the word of God. Because they are not preparing you for the judgment. This is why, you need the whole provable truth that is recorded in the Word of God, not man's opinions. Therefore, their life principles or anything else that they may teach will not do you any good when you stand before God at the judgment. Remember, Jesus said, Matthew 7 21-23, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, you must know what God word says as it pertains to your salvation. Because one day all of us will die. And all of us will have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And give an account of the life choices that we have made. Please never forget, that partial truths equals complete lies. Once again, please don't forget that you must obey the gospel in order to be saved. This is what Peter taught in Acts 2.38 that you must repent and be baptized in order to be saved. Be sure to invest into yourself by liking all videos, sharing these videos with everyone that you know. Because there are millions of people who are being misled. At least commenting, amen, and following and or subscribing. So, until the next time, take care.